Hey guys, welcome back to the video. Welcome back to another video about traveling abroad. So today I want to talk about a big achievement that I had while I was living in Vietnam and talk about the actual idea of health, dieting, why you are abroad living. So this is a big achievement that I had living in Vietnam. I was able to lose almost 10 kilograms. I quit smoking, I quit drinking, I stopped caffeine altogether. And I want to talk about how I did that and how I got through that process while I was living in Vietnam where smoking, drinking, coffee, and excessive eating is kind of the norm and part of the culture. And the final part, I wanna talk about how I got through keto dieting and also how I went seven days on a prolonged diet to finally really complete my diet and become a lot healthier with no regret. So before we get started, I wanna talk about kind of the starting point, where I came from before I started getting into the diet and changing my health habits while I was living abroad. Now I do wanna say this isn't any type of medical advice, this is just me sharing my story while I was living in Vietnam and how I changed my diet and kind of got rid of the bad habits. So while I was living in Vietnam and most of Asia, I was really living the life for say, like I was eating a lot of fast food, I was drinking a lot, I was smoking a lot. I was just kind of out of control, I guess, in, in a positive way for say. So ideally, before I started all this diet stuff, I was about 90, 92 kilograms, which is about 200, 210 pounds. Big guy, right? So what made me actually do these changes? This is more of a chain reaction of different events that kind of just kept moving over like a domino effect. This all started with me quitting smoking. After my mom was diagnosed with cancer, she was on stage four lung cancer. I really stopped for a while and just thought about the things I was doing. And smoking was something I was heavy about. I was smoking one or two packs a day. So I ended up quitting this pretty much overnight while I was living in Vong Tao. The quitting process oddly was really easy. I hear a lot of stories of people saying they had to quit eight or nine times and it was a challenge. For me, it was very straightforward. I don't know if it was the motivation of my family suffering from it or I just got tired of it. What I did was I ended up listening to Alan Carr's audiobook. I'll put it up here somewhere. It's a very good book. It gives you a different outlook on how to quit smoking. And after listening to it, it got me to really think about my bad habits because it makes you really think about what we're doing as like habits being smoking or drinking and how you should really think about it, how it affects you. And that's kind of what it did for me. I didn't substitute smoking with nicotine patches or anything. I didn't do some other habit, sunflower seeds or something that we normally would do. I just quit that day and I never did it again. And Alan Carr also has another book for drinking, which is called um, How to Reduce Your Drinking. Spoiler alert, at the end of the book, he pretty much says, why? are you still drinking? Just quit. It was seriously wild how fast I quit drinking and I quit smoking. Mind you, I was still in Vietnam and smoking and drinking in Vietnam, if you live in Vietnam or have been there before, you know that is a big part of the culture. If you watch other YouTubers talking about Vietnam, 99% of them are talking about drinking culture or that they are drinking and a big part of it. So if you're going out, you're gonna drink or you're gonna smoke or you're gonna be around it. And the idea that I was able to quit going through these Alan Carr books and never be tempted, it was crazy to me because it seemed kind of surreal. And being back in America, I've been to a lot of bars out here and the reason for it is mostly for the food, the bar food. It's, it's amazing out here. But I've never been tempted drinking or smoking. If you are trying to quit, I strongly, I'll try to put them up here. I strongly recommend checking out these books. They will help you quit quick. It's crazy how good it is. So check it out, definitely. This isn't a sponsor video. This is just me giving you my friendly advice. If you're gonna quit smoking or drinking, understand you're not sacrificing, you're gaining. With that being said, let's get on to the next one. So after I quit smoking, this got me to start thinking like, how else could I improve my health? So I started getting into sugar, like trying to figure out how to stop doing the sugar. When I was living in Vietnam, I was drinking a lot of steak. I love steak. It's amazing. You can drink like 30 of them and it still it equals about the same as one rock star in America. But I love drinking it. The problem with it is it has like 25, 35 milligrams of sugar. And if you multiply that by like 10 that I was drinking a day, I was on my road to diabetes real fast, like real fast. And some of the books that I read, again, I'll put them up here, made me go and do this. And again, being in Vietnam, this is kind of weird because in the South where I was living, everything is sugar. If you check out my other videos, again, check out these links up here. I talk a lot about the food in South Vietnam and it's coated in sugar. It is coated. Everything has sugar in the South, which isn't a bad thing, but when you're trying to quit sugar, it's kind of a difficult thing. So what I ended up doing is I started doing a lot of research and there's a doctor, Dr. Berg, he does YouTube channels. He focuses heavily on keto. So I ended up reading his book right here and that led me to really transforming my diet to vegetables fruit and like 10 percent meat so i really dug down and i ate a lot of eggs as well the great thing about living in vietnam is vegetables chicken beef and eggs are super cheap 
and you can get them anywhere, like literally anywhere. And when I started doing this, man, let me tell you, the weight really went down. So at this point, I've already quit drinking, I've quit smoking, so my health is really becoming a lot better. I'm feeling a lot better. But when I started getting on the keto and I started only eating fruits and vegetables, the weight just dropped. Again, I was looking at about 90, 91 kilograms with my weight. And I'll put a little, little thing up here somewhere on how my weight actually went when I was living in full mind. I went from 90 some kilograms down to 80, literally in like, I think it was like four or five weeks. It was insane how fast I was losing weight. And the secret to it was I just stopped drinking beer, I dropped the sugar, and I was just eating healthy. My body was literally dumping out the, the fat. My feeling, how, like my skin was healing better. It was insane how fast this happened. And one thing that I learned through Dr. Berg and a lot of these other videos was our diet is about 85% of what our weight loss is. So if you're eating bad stuff all the time, like sugar, fast food, stuff like that, you're really, you can't work out enough. Like you, you are shoving so much bad food in there. Your body can't defeat this. You can't outwork a bad diet. And this is something I learned very true. 80 to 85% of what you eat accounts for your body image, like how it looks, your fat and all that stuff. And 15, 10 to 15% accounts for your actual weight loss. So if you're eating healthy, your weight loss is so much better. This is a weird thing about it all, is I changed my diet, but I never worked out once, but I was dropping this weight and I felt great. In regards to how much I was eating, I was just eating like once or twice a day. When I was eating the salads, eating the eggs, eating, you know, adding some fish in there, I just felt good. I wasn't hungry anymore. And one thing from this, when I talked about I dropped my beer, one thing I noticed when I I stopped drinking the beer, like my sleeping became better. I was losing fat a lot faster. And I know a lot of people, I've seen people say this on different forums where if you drink light beer, like a Tiger Bach, which is Tiger Light or like Bud Light or something like that, it's still yeast and sugar. Bad beer is bad beer. You, you just, you really have to go all out. Like I said, check out the Alan Carr video or not the video, but the book on how to reduce your drinking. It is an awesome book. I've never slept or felt better in my life. And I saved so much money. The money that I used to spend on alcohol now, I just put in the mutual funds. So it was a huge benefit. Another thing that I really learned was I stopped counting calories. A lot of videos I watch, people are always talking about, you should count your calories. You should only eat 1500 a day. I started to realize within like a week, cause I'm really bad at doing that kind of stuff. It's a waste of time. And again, I'm not a health guru. I don't know any of this, like I'm not a professional. I'm just telling you how I did it. But count, counting calories was a waste of time. Most of the time you're counting bad calories. So if you eat a hamburger that's 1200 calories and you count that and you only give yourself 300 more for the day, you have to understand those 1300 calories for that burger literally are empty calories. So you're just starving yourself and you're always hungry. What I started doing was just when I was eating healthy, I would eat all I want. Our favorite food is naturally just fruits, vegetables, and light meat. So if you're eating healthy, you will naturally just lose weight and you're not going to be hungry. Eating carbs and refined sugars is something that we really just have to kind of get out of. When you're doing, when you're eating that type of food, you become hungry. Think about it. So if you're eating healthy, you're going to feel full more and you're not going to be as hungry. So that was a huge kind of eye opener for me. Avoid carbs, refined sugars, and you will literally just start shedding the weight. That was insane to me, but that's how I went. I always tried to avoid carbs like breads, bon bees, which is very hard in Vietnam because noodles are a carb, rice is a carb. So I was strictly on like a vegetable fruit diet and I would use some meats like 10% in there. But my diets were strictly cutting out all those carbs and everything. So part of this massive weight loss was I just got rid of a lot of the bad things that I was eating in my diet. And the weird thing about this was when I cut all these carbs, sugars out and I started eating healthy, but I would have cuts on my arm for like scratchy stuff. All this stuff was literally healing overnight. That was what really blew my mind was my arm would have like marks for me scratching. And within days they were gone. Like they were literally gone. This is actually the first time I broke out in like the last like year, but it's because I'm in America and a lot of the food, again, I'm like carving out again. I'm not gaining the weight as fast as I usually do. So when I cut the carbs and refined sugars and I just started eating healthier, Jesus, do like my appearance has been amazing and again check out my older videos like when i was leaving vietnam and i was doing the how to get out of vietnam during the whole pandemic thing visually getting younger than how i looked a year ago so either way when i was looking at the dr berg videos actually his main focus is keto diets which is pretty much vegetables light meats and like nuts and stuff like that he avoids the fruits because of the sugars even though the, the fruit has fiber to balance out the sugar he was completely off sugar so i followed that for a while that was a big part of it and i went through the keto for about five or six weeks 
felt good. It did take about a week to get used to it though. I, I will tell you, if you try to do this, that first week is hard, especially if you have a high sugar or yeast diet, be like beer, sodas. So that was a hard part. But once I got through like the three or four days, it was so easy. And it was like, I would eat like once a day. Sometimes I actually had to remind myself to eat. There was actually a few days where I just didn't eat. But this is what led me to the final part. There's this good book. This was written back in 1911. I'll put it up here. So this book was the first like open study of prolonged fasting. See, prolonged fasting is pretty much not eating at all. Like literally just not eating for like a month or two. Check out this book. It is free to download. I believe Bill Gates marked it out as like a, uh, it's like an archive book or something like that. But you get it from the University of San Diego. It's a free download. It's a free book. You don't got to pirate it. I don't even think you can actually buy it anymore. It's just an archive book. But either way, check out that book. It is an amazing book. It goes over prolonged fasting. The first half of the book is the actual doctor talking about his studies. And the last half of the book are just letters sent to him about results of other people going through prolonged fasting. So with that being said, what I ended up doing is going seven days, no eating. And I'm going to tell you, those first three days sucked. And it, but I think it was like a mental thing. Like I felt like I was hungry mentally, but I wasn't really hungry. But once I got past that third day, it was easy. Like I literally went four days without eating and I never thought about it. And this is where my body was healing completely. I was sleeping better. I had more energy than ever before. It was insane to me. No coffee no food, no sugars. And I was just like wild. I was kicking it. I was chilling. I was having a lot of fun. I was out doing stuff. I was playing soccer at the time. Like a lot of things were coming together for me. So again, this is something that you probably don't want to talk to your doctor about. Maybe I'm, I'm again, I'm not a doctor. Check out the research on it, but it was one of the best things I think I ever did when it came to actually like self-improvement and dieting next to smoking and drinking, quitting it, not doing it. A few things that I learned when I started getting on the keto diet and doing the prologue was the first one was weird. Things like smoothies and dehydrated fruit is horribly bad for you. And the reason they're bad for you is because when you dehydrate it or you blend it up to make the smoothie, it destroys the fiber. So you are just getting the, the sugar of the fruit. When you're eating fruit, the fiber kind of balances out the sugar, right? So when you're breaking it up like that or you're dehydrating, you're destroying the fiber. So ideally eating like dried fruit or drinking a smoothie is almost like eating a candy bar. I know it's not equivalent, because the candy bar is obviously a lot unhealthier. Kind of has the same idea. Again, not medical advice, this is just what I experienced, but do keep that in mind. Part of your objective, if you are gonna try to lose weight and get on a healthier diet, is you want to avoid refined sugars, 100%. If you want to have sugars, make sure it's something that has fiber. If you look at candy bars and stuff, it'll have like 20 or 30 milligrams of sugar and like one gram, of, one milligram of fiber. The sugar just goes straight to your blood. And another thing I learned is detoxing, it's not a real thing. There's no detox food. There is, if you want to detox, eat healthy. Keto is a good way. Again, Dr. Berg, check him out on YouTube. He has a huge channel with a ton of videos that goes over this stuff. He's a professional, I'm not. Check out his book if you want to kind of learn a little bit more about it. If you want to detox, just eat healthy. Once I got off that, whoo, let me tell you, that weight, that's kind of when the weight really started like just falling naturally and fast. So the last thing I quit, this is gonna sound weird because we're, remember, I lived in Vietnam. I quit coffee and caffeine altogether. Coffee soda is the biggest thing in Vietnam. Coffee is a huge thing in Vietnam and I quit. And the reason I quit was, again, coffee soda, it, it's, it uses condensed milk, which is pretty much just sugar. It, it's literally just sugar gel. So I ended up quitting that. That was actually a hard one. I started getting a lot of headaches and stuff for the first couple of days. I had to get rid of those sugars. And this is something I realized, like by my fourth day of doing my prolonged fasting, I was still getting like a coffee soda every day. And this is when I realized I wasn't actually fasting. I was inducing sugar into myself, which wasn't helping anything. So this is kind of where I had to reset and get rid of the sugar at all. I ended up quitting coffee, uh, all coffee and caffeine. So th at this point I had no stings, no caffeine. I will tell you, it was a very hard thing. So during this quit process, like the first couple of days, I was really tired all the time. I was getting headaches. After you get, like for me personally, once I got past that third day of no caffeine, it really just felt fine. Like humans naturally have energy. And when you're drinking caffeine, coffee, what you're doing is you're giving yourself a boost and then your body's, you know, activity goes down below, you know, your normal bead. So you have to drink coffee to get back to a normal state. And you see people rushing the Starbucks and stuff, they're just drinking coffee to get back to that normal. If you want to get that natural energy, my advice on this one is try getting rid of the coffee. Try it for a week. It will take like a week. Trust me, uh, the first three days, you're just like moping around, you're tired, you're dead. But once you get past that dead period, oh my God, dude, the energy is insane. And it's, it's just worth it, man. So what was the outcome of all this? So when I actually quit all of this stuff, 
and, I, and it was about a week and a half, two weeks into it. It really transformed me. Like I was motivated as hell. I started learning Spanish because I was like, I want to go to, I want to go to Spain one day. So I started learning Spanish. I started learning Swift programming, and I also started just doing this YouTube channel. I was like, hey, I should actually do this because I would just before, if you look at my old videos from like two months ago, I would do a video like every six or eight months on like a new house or just something random. My motivation like quadrupled the moment I quit all this stuff at the same time. You know, I wasn't smoking, I wasn't wasting time drinking, I wasn't pounding sugars all day. Like my mentality changed. So if you do quit these things, it is a it is a battle. It is literally, a, I mean, you have to think about it, caffeine, sugar, fast food, yeast, beer. These are all addictions, they're vices. But with that being said, I think that kind of does it for today. I really just wanted to share a story with you. I, I didn't know how to do this video. I don't even know if anybody's watched this video. If you are, leave a comment below saying you're still here. I just, I felt good and I feel good. I quit smoking, I quit drinking, I quit eating really horrible food and, and I really improved my life. And now I've come back to America because my mother was sick and I have the ability, motivation to go back out abroad and do this again, which is awesome because I'll be able to come back to Vietnam and see you guys. I will be able to go to South America in the next couple months. This has been a life-changing thing that happened to me and it only took three or four months. And remember, I did all this in Vietnam where alcohol and smoking is a huge part of the culture, where coffee is a huger part of the culture. And I got rid of it all and it was worth it. And I think this is crazy because again, I quit all this stuff while I was living in Vietnam. So I think that does it for today, guys. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, this is kind of a random video. I don't do these types too much, but this is something that I really achieved and I'm proud of it. So I wanted to share with you guys and kind of go through my story. Hopefully it helps somebody else out. Let me know below if you have similar desire to quit this stuff or how it's going for you or whatever it is. So either way, hit that like button if you did like this type of video. I can't do more of them if you enjoy them. Just let me know. The like button lets me know what you guys like. And make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can get updates on my new videos that are coming out about my travel or even these random things. And check out the website if you want to pick up my teacher book for teaching English abroad and how to get into it and learn how to adapt to the Vietnam culture when you first move there. Till then guys, I will see you again.